So this is one of the rational question where you have the degree of numerator higher than degree of denominator, which is like, which results in one of the special type of asymptote, which is nothing with oblique asymptote, linear oblique asymptote. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the subparts A, B, C, D. A part is to find out the asymptotes and the intercepts of the function. So now vertical asymptote, as you can see, is x equals to negative 4. Uh, lots of times students make mistake as uh, instead of taking x equals to negative 4, they will just take as x equal, I mean, negative 4 as asymptote. Like negative 4, there is no asymptote. This is not the equation. So when I represent the equation of a vertical asymptote or the horizontal asymptote, it must be in proper format. So that's your first equation of vertical asymptote. That's your view. Now, since there is an oblique asymptote here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this function as uh, like a function form of quotient plus uh, remainder over divide. Now, for that, I'm just going to do a little bit of, a little bit of long division. So x squared plus 4x plus 16. And I'm dividing by x plus 4. So I'm going to take here x, and that becomes x squared plus 4x and minus and eventually the remainder this, that you get is 16. This can be written as x plus 16 over x plus four. Now, lots of times if I don't show this reasoning or this logic, what I've done here, you don't get marks for oblique asymptote. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to show this reasoning or the calculation that I've done here. Now, why is it the horizontal oblique asymptote? So what I do is as x tends to infinity, this part you notice is gonna become zero because anything over infinity, so infinity plus four is gonna become zero. So that's why this function actually approaches to y equals to x line. So the oblique asymptote is y equals to x. So that's how you find out the oblique asymptote here. Now what I'm gonna do next is to find out the x intercept and all. So to find out the axis intercept, I'm just going to plug for y intercept, plug x as zero. So that gives me four itself. So, so it's going to cut at zero comma four. So that's your y intercept. And for x intercept, what do you do is you plug y as zero and solve for x. So if I do zero equals to x squared plus four x plus 16 over uh, x plus four, what I get is eventually is cross multiplies to zero. Um, so that becomes x squared plus 4x plus 16 equals to 0. And you can see clearly that this quadratic, which you have written here, which is going to have 6, b squared minus 4ac value as 16 squ uh, 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16, which is less than 0. Now, it means that this quadratic does not have a real solution. It means that this graph is not going to cross x-axis at any point. So it does not cross. It does not cross x-axis. So it does not have uh, basically the, uh, what do you say is the x-intercept. So that's that's the part A. Now, as far as the domain is concerned, now what, what we do is, now as far as the domain is, you can simply say x belongs to real numbers because it is defined for all the values apart from negative four, it is, it is undefined. So as x belongs to real numbers, x should not be negative four. Now, as far as the range of the function is concerned, like we cannot directly predict the range by just looking at the equation. So this part is actually we're gonna do after doing the, the C part. So next part is to actually predict the turning point. Now, where does the graph, graph has a turning point? Now, when, when turning point means where the graph has a minimum or maximum. So a simple example of turning point that I can give you is like a quadratic, like a quadratic has this vertex as a turning point. So now all these things can be predicted uh, using a general logic. Now what I'm going to do is to, to find out the turning points, we follow certain procedure that you need to keep it in your mind. Now what we do is, let's say my equation is x squared plus 4x plus 16 over x plus 4. Now this is, they're clearly saying without using a derivative. So you can't use calculus as people who know 
how to use derivative and maxima minima logic, you might be tempted to use it, but they're clearly said that do not use that. So what we do is here, uh, if you're finding out the, let's say, um, the turning point, what you do is you just cross multiply and convert it like a quadratic equation. Now, what I do is if I convert it to quadratic equation, I get x, y plus four y equals to x squared plus four x plus 16. Now I bring out everything one side, like as if it's a, I'm solving like a quadratic in terms of x. So now for x squared plus four x plus 16 minus x, y minus four y equals to zero. So what I'm doing is actually I'm trying to, if you see here, I'm trying to get it as a quadratic in terms of X. So, so when you look at here, X squared plus, it becomes four minus Y times X plus 16 minus four Y equals to zero. So this is like a proper quadratic in terms of X. Now, since we know that the, the graph, this X has a real solution apart from minus four at each X value, it has got a real solution. In order to be X to be real and real, whether it's equal or not, that's, that's different perspective. But in order to be having a real root for this equation for domain to be a finite number or it has to be meaningful, your discriminant for this equation must be more than or equals to zero. So when you look at discriminant for this equation is higher than or equals to zero. What it results in is four minus y the whole square minus four times one times 16 minus four y is greater than or equals to zero. Now this, if you open it up, what do we get is 16 minus eight y plus y squared minus 64 uh, plus, this becomes four fours of 16, so this is plus 16 y. Now, if you open this up and simplify, what we get is y squared plus eight y minus 48 more than or equals to zero. And I'm just solving this out here as a final step is now since we got a quadratic inequality, we're gonna put a sign diagram. If you factor this out, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll get as negative 12, negative 12 and, um, and positive four as the, as the value of the roots for this. Here, the sign diagram is gonna be negative, positive, and a positive. So when you look at, I wanted to have more than or equals to zero. So what happened is that your Y should be higher than or equals to four, or Y should be lower than or equals to minus 12. So what it means is that there is like some turning point, okay, higher than or equals to four, something like that. And then other point is lower than or equals to minus 12. So this is like a turning point. Now still you haven't got the X coordinate. Okay, so what you do is in order to get the proper X coordinate, now you need to plug this X, Y equals to four here. So if I put Y equals to four, I get like four equals to X squared plus four X plus 16 or X plus four. Now you cross multiply, so you get X squared plus four X plus 16 equals to, you get it as four X plus 16 itself. So what you get is this get canceled. So you get X is nothing but zero. So there is uh, actually a turning point at zero, zero comma four. So that's your one turning point. The second turning point you plug, get by plugging Y is minus 12 here. So negative 12 equals to X squared plus four X plus 16 over X plus four. And you can solve for X values to get exact, uh, exact X coordinates. So it'll become X squared plus four X plus 16 minus 12 equals to minus 12 X. So minus 12 X and minus 48. So if you bring in the equations on one side, you get X squared plus 16 X plus 64 equals to zero. That results in X equals to negative eight. So the turning point coordinates that you get here exactly are zero comma four and, and zero comma and a negative eight comma negative 12. So these are the two turning points, whether they're maximum or minimum, their nature will be justified once we're doing the final step that is sketching the curve. So now as far as the final sketching is concerned, we're just gonna put all the information that we have. So we have the X intercepts, Y intercept, our oblique asymptote is Y equals to X line here. And you have vertical asymptote at X equals to negative four. 
So at x equals to negative four, there's a vertical asymptote here. All right, so now let's just kind of mark the uh, equation, whatever the critical points are. So the, there are no roots, so there, the graph does not have any root. There is a turning point at 0, 4. 0, 4 is a turning point. And um, so this point is here. Uh, the y-intercept is obviously at 0, 4. Uh, X-intercept is not existing. Uh, there is any other information. So yeah, so these are all the information that I have. And apart from this, there's another turning point is negative 8, negative 12. So obviously here, because this curve has a turning point here, so obviously it can't come like something like this, because in that case, it'll uh, ruin all the rules because like it'll cut the vertical asymptote, it'll not follow the oblique asymptote. So what it matters is that it is basically become, it your graph has to be something like, in this case, it has to be something parallel to the vertical asymptote, and then it should approach the oblique asymptote slowly parallel to this side for, for the, x more than, so x equals to minus four, onwards my graph is ready. Now, since we have got another turning point, now your graph can't be here because there's a turning point. So your graph can't take something like this. So in this range that in order to have a turning point, now turning points at eight, negative eight comma negative 12. And if you see that negative eight comma negative 12 is somewhere here down, which is in between this cage. So what you do is in order to have the turning point here, eight negative eight comma negative 12, make it like this. So this point which you got is negative eight comma negative 12. Now, coming back to the previous part, which was to predict the range of the function. Now you can predict the range, which is y greater than or equals to four or y less than or equals to negative 12. So that is, that is a way to find out the equation uh, or the range after sketching the graph.